Simply put, if you want the best at an extremely low price, this is it. Winter Sun is the result of our pursuit of the best source of vitamin D3. The research and development took over two years, but the result, as verified by independent laboratories, is the best vegan vitamin D3 product in the world. Read the facts at InfoWarsLife.com about Winter Sun Vitamin D3. Not only does vitamin D3 promote a healthy mood, but vitamin D supports our memory and brain function, something the globalists are targeting. Visit at InfoWars.com today or call 888-253-3139. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. For a limited time, get 25% off on this introductory offer. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. Ancientdefense.com. There is an extra special and rare total lunar eclipse taking place this Saturday morning. It has some people worried for this Easter weekend. The blood moon is a rare celestial event, yet for the third time in less than a year, the moon will dip behind the Earth's shadow, appearing a deep coppery red for a few minutes, and this will transform the skies over North America, Asia, and Australia into a deep red color. Now there are several interesting things about this particular blood moon. While some eclipses can last an hour or more, this will be the shortest lunar eclipse of this century. It's also taking place the morning of Easter Vigil, which is traditionally observed as the period between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. The eclipse also falls within the first night of Passover, which is observed by Jews worldwide beginning Friday at sunset. Now, according to NASA, the rare tetrad of four alignments in close proximity has only happened a handful of times in the last 2,000 years. The final blood moon eclipse of the tetrad series will take place September 28, 2015, which also happens to be a Jewish holiday. Many people believe that these lunar eclipses and their appearance on auspicious dates signals a world-changing event that's about to take place. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Joel 2, 31. Now, regardless if you believe in the blood moon prophecies or whether or not God created the sun, moon, and stars to be signs for mankind, we are witnessing a pivotal time in the Middle East. Current events seem to be moving us toward World War III. So whether or not these blood moons are warning us about nuclear war, it's safe to say that something pretty major is about to happen. Now there's something else about this Tetrad series that's pretty bizarre. It happens to fall in a Shemitah year. This is something that hasn't happened for 2,000 years. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn points out in his book, The Mystery of the Shemitah, that these years in the past have brought down economies, kingdoms, and nations that haven't followed God's will. A very major thing happened that escaped most people. The Shemitah began in, in the autumn of, of, of 2014, and what happened is within two weeks, well, actually within one week of it beginning, and remember the Shemitah can mean the fall, within one week America was overtaken, Russia became the greatest nuclear power on Earth. It actually surpassed the first week of the Shemitah. The second week of the Shemitah so came something even more major, and that is that the American age that began in the year 1871, when we became the strongest economic power on Earth, came to an end. America was dethroned as the Shemitah began. It is now China has taken the crown of America. Now, I've warned for since the Harbinger came out, I've warned that if we don't turn back to God, there is going to be the crown that America has worn as the head of nations is going to be removed. We are seeing the beginning of that right now. 
And so we are watching actually when, when the, um, the same week that the Shemitah began, Wall Street went crazy for about a month. Now, the, the pattern of the, the last Shemitahs have been that often at the beginning of the Shemitah, you don't notice anything, but there are often foreshadows. Well, the major thing, if something's going to happen, the major period is going to be uh, coming up is at the always at the end of the Shemitah as we approach September. That's the time of that wipeout. I'm not saying it has to happen, but I believe we need to be aware of it. And interesting, people who look, you know, look at signs, um, they're, one of the signs in the Bible of judgment is the darkening of the sun or an eclipse. Not that it always is, but it can be. On the day that we get to the wipeout day, Elul 29 of this Shemitah cycle, the sun's going to be darkened at that time. That The last time that happened was 1987, when the, the sun was darkened at, the, at Elul 29. It led into Black Monday, the worst day crash in world history. Um, I believe we are going to watch, if we don't turn back, if this nation keeps on going on its course, we're going to watch the fall of America or the shaking of America. And the American age that you and I and, every, and all our listeners have known since we were born is going to come to an end. You can witness this rare event for yourself. The action starts at 5.16 a.m. Central Standard Time on the morning of April 4th. The Earth's shadow will slowly move across the moon, covering it entirely just before 7 a.m. I know that's a little bit early on a Saturday, but it's going to be a breathtaking spectacle, and you're alive, so get up early and witness it. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 well, it's 2015, and science fiction has become science fact. Things that were predicted in movies like The Terminator or Minority Report or even 1984 are now coming to fruition. Do we really have such little control over our reality? Were we being programmed for this dystopic future all along? Or do we really have such little humanity left in us that we're willingly giving it away to our robot overlords? Well, my guest today, John Rappaport of nomorefakenews.com says, no, it's not all predictive programming, but our controllers just don't want us to know that we still have the power to create the reality that we desire. So John, thank you so much for joining the show today. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, one of your recent articles, Not Everything is Predictive Programming. We are always seeing these, these movies with their dystopic futures and with the RoboCops and pre-crime, and yet 
still every single day people are lining up to get the new biometric cell phone and something you know something that's going to enslave them with with all of this futuristic type stuff and so it's kind of hard to say well it, uh, that those type of movies and science fiction and stuff aren't preparing us for this future when it seems that that's exactly what we're being corralled into so talk to me about everything not being specifically predictive programming well certainly a lot is let's get that straight um movies in hollywood major blockbusters science fiction that sort of thing we certainly do see programming that are pre that is preparing people for a mechanized, robotic, mind-controlled, uh, horrific future. And they turn these blockbusters out all the time. And one of the reasons they do that is because they make money. Some of them make gigantic amounts of money. But you can go overboard with that to the point where you could say everything that's ever been done in the field of science fiction is predictive programming because it postulates futures, alternative futures. And that's the upside. Because if you're awake and alert and you're reading science fiction novels or seeing some science fiction, it stimulates your own imagination so that in the end, you begin to consider different possibilities for yourself and everybody else. Futures that can be created that don't exist now that we're not locked into. That was the original purpose of science fiction. That was the whole idea, that it could forestall certain horrific futures and open up people's minds to the possibility of inventing futures that would be much better for all of us. But you see, if people don't even know they have imaginations, because in their schooling, training, indoctrination, and so forth, they've been basically taught to devalue it to say, well, it's just a toy for children, and now I'm grown up, and now I have to do other things, then everything, and I can't stress this too much, then everything they take in from the world has a component of mind control in it, because they are passive. They don't access their own imagination. A person with an active imagination can look at any number of predictive programming, movies, TV series, and so forth, and not be affected by that at all, because they understand this is a product of somebody's imagination. Well, I have imagination, too, and I can envision all kinds of other things. You see, that's part of what is creating this robotic society in the first place, is the fact that so many people don't seem to understand that they have a very powerful imagination that can conceive of futures for the human race, multiple futures, and their own personal futures for themselves, mm -hmm. what they would really like to be doing, like to be uh, exploring. That's a big problem in society, a gigantic problem. Yeah, absolutely, especially since so many people from a very young age now are constantly tapped into technology. And I had a discussion with someone that they said, you know, they thought video games and things like that really helped to spur people's imagination and help them conceive these alternate realities, which is, you know, something that you also mentioned science fiction is able to do. But at the same time, they're not really using their own imagination. They're just sub submerging themselves in this reality that someone has created for them. And so they're not actually getting out there and allowing them their minds to wander. And children or those that aren't awake don't realize that they are being subjected to a little bit of programming. So they might not even realize that they're not actually using their imagination, but they're being programmed. So talk to me a little bit about how, you know, if you aren't aware of that, how are some ways that they can sort of bypass your brain functions to sell you this reality? Visual images are very powerful. You know, kids become obsessed with these video games. Mm -hmm. That's a clue. That's called a clue. You know, when you're playing a game five, six hours a day, something is happening there that is entraining your mind, your brain, to operate along certain rhythms, 
with certain directions, narrow directions, intensely focused on, as you say, what somebody else is creating.